I was 19 the first time I saw a cock in person. I held it in my hand, studying it, sliding my hand up and down it. I liked how the skin moved along the shaft and how it grew when I stroked it. <laughs> I hadn't expected it to have visible veins that ran crisscross it. Blue, green, purple. I was fascinated with the head and its hole winking at me like a one-eyed snake. Now, prior to this, penises were a mystery to me. And I'd seen a few in movies, along with finding an old copy of Playgirl stashed in a box marked Mom Stuff. <laughs> but dicks and the men they were attached to were an unknown to me. Now, based on my limited knowledge, I assumed that all dongs were exactly the same. My first two sexual partners each had dicks that were similar in size and shape. But it wasn't until the third one I saw in person that I realized willies come in a variety of offerings. That third dick was brought into my life via AOL. <laughs> For those unfamiliar with AOL, it was an early ISP that served as Tinder for Gen X. <laughs> I met Paul in a chat room and we hit it off immediately. <laughs> now, while I was here in San Diego, Paul lived in the far off and exotic land of Michigan. <laughs> His obvious intelligence drew me in. His ability to make me laugh via words on the screen hooked me. We eventually exchanged phone numbers and began talking daily. Now, we were both broke college students, and we couldn't exactly fly across the country to see one another. We chatted on a daily basis for seven months before he saved enough money to come, for me to come, uh, to come see me. Oh, it's going to get good. <laughs> <laughs> we chatted on a daily basis for nearly seven months before he saved enough money to come see me the week of Thanksgiving break. Now, by the time he arrived, I knew I wanted him. <laughs> We'd spent countless hours talking to one another about everything and anything. I shared with him things I'd never told anyone else. He was vulnerable with me, sharing his stressors, his problems, his dreams and aspirations. Now, after picking him up at the airport, we returned to my apartment. I thought we would immediately get naked and get it on. <laughs> Instead, he sat me down on the couch, he explained. He wanted to put off having sex. He had feelings for me, and he didn't want to just fuck for the sake of fucking. <laughs> he wanted to know that what we had was real. <laughs> and for me, it was romantic, and I fell for him just a little harder. We spent the next week exploring San Diego, and at night we would cuddle in my bed. I tried rubbing up on him a few times, but he held firm. <laughs> As the day of his departure grew close, he explained that he saved enough money to fly me to Detroit come winter break. Fucking Detroit in winter. 
<laughs> it was at that time that he would introduce me to his friends and family. And it was at that point we would start the physical part of our relationship. <laughs> I counted the days. I longed for the moment we would finally consummate our relationship. The months-long foreplay of words had driven me into a sexual frenzy which could only be satisfied by getting him into me. <laughs> It gets better. <laughs> I arrived in Detroit and basically ordered him to take me straight to his place. As soon as we got there, as soon as we got there, I started tearing his clothes off. He took my hands, looked me in the eyes, and said, I have something I need to tell you. I have a really big dick. <laughs> okay, great, let's do this. He then said, no, you don't understand. I have a really, really big dick. I snickered thinking of all my friends who'd shared how their boyfriends had said much the same thing only to discover that the joystick in question was of average size. <laughs> he then dropped trow and I gasped at the sight before me. Y'all, it wasn't just big. <laughs> it wasn't just huge. It was massive. A monster of a dick. <laughs> Mira, no era un pito, era un chorizo gigante. <laughs> A scary, veiny, throbbing third leg of a phallus. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. I thought, mm-mm. The thought of trying to get that thing into me filled me with anxiety. How was it possible that this lanky white dude was packing so much heat? <laughs> yeah, I've been afraid to show it to you. It's been a problem in the past. I could see the pain in his eyes and hear the hurt in his voice. I couldn't help but feel sorry for him and his big fat cock. <laughs> I tried to figure out where it might fit and how I might give him pleasure. I wrapped my fingers around it but could only get about halfway around the shaft. My index finger and thumb were inches apart. <laughs> Hang on. After a few minutes, he laid me back onto the bed and began to give me oral pleasure. I tried to return the favor, but the task was beyond my capabilities. <laughs> Despite my apprehension, I said, let's try doing it? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> For 
from the missionary position, he tried entering me slowly and with care. He kept whispering, relax, relax. But no matter how much I tried, it was impossible. After kissing and caressing for a while, my body relaxed some. I bit my lip and did my best not to move too much. I was afraid of accidentally pressing too hard and jamming him into me. We continued at a slow pace. Finally, my body allowed him in. Not the whole of him, but a portion of him. As he thrust into me, I could feel my cervix pressing into me, folding my insides, squishing my uterus, and pushing into my fallopian tubes. <laughs> the pain ripped through me and I pushed him away. Sorry, I can't, I, I, I just can't. He held me and said it was okay. I done better than most girls. <laughs> For the next few days, we tried various positions and methods. Each time left us frustrated and unfulfilled. Now about a week into my visit, Paul invited his friend Todd over. Todd was friendly and fun, and I immediately liked him. At one, po at one point, Todd excused himself to use the restroom. As he left, I caught a glimpse of Todd and Paul not at one another. With Todd out of the room, Paul approached me with an offer. <laughs> he knew from our conversations that one of my fantasies was to have a threesome. Me and two dudes. <laughs> he said he loved me and wanted me to experience every possible pleasure. He offered that if I wanted, he and Todd would fulfill my fantasy. I found Todd quite attractive. Fuck it, he was hot as fuck. <laughs> Italian, like, mm, just, oh. I was unsure if the offer was true or if he was simply testing me. He sensed my uncertainty and let me know it was up to me. He and Todd would be more than happy to give me what I wanted. He said this way he could also make sure that I was satisfied without the worry of injury. <laughs> Todd came back into the room and I sat there knowing that yes, this was something I wanted. I stood up, I took Paul's hand, then I walked over to Todd, held my hand out to him, he smiled and together, we walked into the bedroom. I told you it's gonna get good. We each undressed while the other two looked on. Paul was the last to get undressed. And as he unleashed the beast, Todd loudly exclaimed, holy shit, it's true, dude, that thing is huge. <laughs> Now the next four hours were a blur. <laughs> it was a mix of Jack Daniels, Marlboro Reds, and Dinosaur Jr. <laughs> We engaged in a type of debauchery only found in the filthiest erotic novels. Now, Paul's cock did not enter Todd nor I. Something we finally took a break to discuss. Now Todd asked what we tried in order to engage in intercourse. And he, 
offered a solution. He suggested reverse cowgirl, with Todd holding my hands in order to help ease me down the shaft. I figured, why not? We've tried everything else. We each had a few more swigs from the bottle of Jack and began the plan. As it turned out, it was somewhat successful, at least at first. Now, I was quite at ease with how the act was proceeding. I began to quicken my pace, taking in more and more of Paul's gift. <laughs> I could hear him moaning with pleasure. And then I began to go to town. And that's when it happened. A loud pop <laughs> rang out. I stopped unsure of where it had come from. Each of us froze as the sound hung in the air. Suddenly, Paul grabbed my hips and pushed me off of him. I turned around to see that his cock was bent at an odd oh. angle. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want to hear the rest of this or not? <laughs> Paul began screaming, as did Todd, Todd and I. Paul fainted. Todd asked, What should we do? <laughs> I knew that Paul needed immediate medical attention. We arrived at the hospital and the nurse could see that Paul was in a lot of pain. The doctor arrived and asked what was wrong. Todd and I looked at each other and Todd said, he has a groin injury. <laughs> the nurse removed the blanket we'd wrapped Paul in. There before us was his fully erect throbbing penis bent at a 45 degree angle. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. The nurse tried to usher us out of the room, but the doctor stopped her. Can you tell me what happened? It was at this point that Paul came through to and said, she broke my dick. The doctor looked at me and I thought I would die. I was mortified and did my best to explain. Todd helpfully filled in the gaps. And the doctor thanked us for our candor. We were ushered into the waiting room while the doctor worked on Paul. Hours passed until finally the nurse called me in. The doctor explained that Paul's penis had been fractured and may require surgery. <laughs> it gets better. <clears throat> I wanted to run away and never look back. Thankfully, Paul did not require surgery, but he did have to wear a medical sleeve for the next couple of months while it healed. I went home for the new semester. We planned for me to return to Detroit for spring break. Paul and I talked every day. I felt such guilt for what had happened. He reassured me that it wasn't my fault and everything would be okay. I returned to Detroit as planned in late March. His dick had made a full recovery. <laughs> The doctor had given him the okay to engage in sex again. He helpfully offered that the scissor straddle position may be our best option to avoid injury. After three months apart, we were ready to try again. At first, 
Paul was slow and cautious. <laughs> Soon he really began to go for it. He pushed deeper and deeper. I did everything I could to allow him entry into my panocha. <laughs> I wanted him to enjoy himself. The guilt of breaking his dick had haunted me. I'm a nice person. <laughs> As he slid in and out of me, he grabbed my leg, pushed my ankle next to my head, and that's when it happened. Pop! It wasn't really an auditory pop. It was more of a physical pop. I felt it in my lower back. A sharp... A sharp sting of pain shot down my left leg. I screamed, stop, and used all my strength to push him off and out of me. I rolled over into the fetal position and began to cry. Take me to the hospital. <laughs> <clears throat> when the doctor came into the room, he took one look at us and said, you two again? <laughs> Paul explained what happened, and the doctor called for the gynecologist. The GYN asked Paul to leave the room. I explained that Paul's penis had broken something in my lower back. She looked at me incredulously. I explained that his cock was huge but I could tell she wasn't quite getting what I was trying to convey. <laughs> Ask the other doctor, he'll tell you. <laughs> I could hear the two doctors talking just outside the room. The ER doctor explained that yes, Paul's penis was the largest he'd ever seen or even heard of. <laughs> After a few tests, it was determined that during sex, a disc in my back slipped and pinched the sciatic nerve. Basically, he blew out my back. <laughs> we left the hospital. Paul reached over and held my hand. We both knew the relationship was over. <laughs> I couldn't imagine trying to engage in sex with him again. There would always be the possibility of injury and a visit to the hospital. A relationship without sex was something that I couldn't see working. I returned home and never saw him again. I'm single, yeah. It took me a while to get over the whole ordeal. I was digmatized. <laughs> to this day, I still have numbness in three of my toes. I don't notice it often, but when I do, I shudder at the memory of Coxzilla. <laughs> In the years since, I've developed a deep appreciation of the penis. Much like Goldilocks, I don't want one that's too big, nor too small. I've come to realize that average sized is just right. Perfect for me. Mira, shout out to all you average sized kings out there. Yeah! Fuck yeah! As for Paul, I saw on Facebook that he and his girlfriend had a baby girl last year. I felt relieved knowing that, I, that his penis still worked. And I'm glad that he found a woman who could handle his gift. God bless her. She's a braver and 
bigger woman than me. VK Chavez, ladies and gentlemen, VK.